Hi everyone. This is a full sissy squat and a reverse Nordic curl. Still need to work on that last part. But wouldn't knee strength, mobility, and power all wrapped in one be awesome for everybody to have? Well, that's what this video is for. If you wanna learn how to do that move, we're gonna start with the basics. This video is gonna have two parts. The first part, I'm gonna show you all the different variations and stuff to build you up there. And the second part is, I'm actually gonna bring you through a workout. So here's the first part. So that movement is broken down into two different movements combined. It's a full sissy squat and a reverse Nordic curl. So both require different feels to it. So the easiest way to train for an advanced movement that's really difficult is just to simplify it. And we can simplify it by lessening the range of motion and I'll show you how. By stacking pillows up just like this and using a wall for balance, you just step a little bit away from it. Make sure your feet are parallel, by the way, because if your toes are inward and your knees are bending, that's not healthy. And if your toes are outward, that's probably even worse for your knees. So make sure your toes are pointed directly towards where you're doing it. So hands on the wall. All you're doing is just bending forward, coming up onto your toes and bringing your knees past your toes to tap the highest part of the pillow. So this is a smaller range of motion, and this is perfect for building up that strength that you need. And your patella right here, which is your kneecap, is getting added pressure on it. So if you have any meniscus injuries or something like that, be very, very, very wary of what you do. You want to avoid pain at all costs, but you do want to fix it, right? Motion is lotion. So get it moving and work it out, but be very careful and avoid pain. I know it's a difficult dance, but you do gotta do it. So with the added pressure on the patellar tendon and the kneecap, it, it's, it's used to build up strength there and your quads. So now that we simplified it, all you do is just boom and now it's more challenging and you can get your knees even further over your toes. And you can also practice balancing with it. Now, your upper body is gonna to wanna to bend forward while you do it, but what you're gonna do is stay really tall, keep your ribs in, your shoulders are wide and down, arms to the side, and then you can press your arms back as you do it, but make sure your back is flat and go up, just like that. So that's the sissy squat. And then of course you can remove all the pillows and make it as challenging for yourself as possible. But don't injure yourself if you feel any pain, you've already gone too far and do not do that. The second movement is obviously the reverse Nordic curl. Now, how do we simplify something like that? Well, I'll show you, check this out. All right, so in order to simplify this movement, you are gonna need to have your knees on the ground. And if this is painful for you, you're gonna wanna have some cushion like pillows, blankets, or anything like that. The theme of this video is avoid pain. Any pain in your knees is bad pain. We don't want that. We want to stress the tendons by giving them pressure and stuff to work through, but we don't want any pain. So how we simplify that reverse Nordic curl, instead of immediately going all the way down through the range of motion, what you're gonna do is sit back, you can lean forward, and then just lift yourself up, just like that. Remember to keep your back flat and you lift yourself up. Now you'll feel it, it's quite different. And the reason why it's different from the sissy squat is because instead of just your knees bending forward, your knees are at full extension right here. They're actually actively stretching. Now you can also challenge yourself by bringing your body, instead of forward, you're bringing your body back like this. So just like this, it's a little bit more challenging. And the further back you go, the more challenging it gets. Now this part might seem a little counterintuitive, but you also need ankle mobility. So here's my favorite stretch for that. So all you do is instead of standing up tall, 
You're just gonna go down into a deep squat. Now, not a lot of people can hold this, so what you're gonna do is lean forward onto your toes, and then instead of just staying right here, you're gonna actually flex your heels toward the ground, and then let your body weight just press your feet down. Now, be aware that you don't want your feet like this, collapsing inward toward each other. You don't like, if you look at this foot right here, see how it can collapse in, that the knee goes a different way than the toes? That's bad. You want the knees to go the same exact direction as the toes the entire time. Just like this, this is your deep squat. And you can also actively practice by holding your deep squat and flexing your shin muscles right here. Those are called your tibialis muscles. Those are super, 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 super valuable. All right, now for the part everybody's been waiting for, the workout. Let's go. Here we are. Make sure you stick to the variation that you feel comfortable with and that doesn't hurt your knees. I showed you quite a few of them, so just choose the one that works best for you. So, we're gonna start with the sissy squat. Now that you have a wall and your pillows ready, you're gonna stand up as tall as you can, like there's a string pulling your head up as tall as you can. Make sure your ribs aren't sticking out, that they're pulled in, and your shoulders are back and in line. Just like this, and your toes are pointed forward, hands on the wall, here we go, sissy squat. You're just gonna bend forward, bring your heels up, and then bend back, that's one. We're gonna do 10, bend forward, and back, and bend, and back. Great job, we're on number four, and back. Number five, this is kind of like a warm up, it's just super small. Six, and seven. Just remember to breathe normally. Eight, and nine, and 10. Great job. So that was the warm up. I hope you started with an easy one because now we're gonna change it to a more difficult setting. But remember, avoid pain. Here we go. Dipping down, this is number one. Dipping down, two. Keep the back straight. This is up number three. Here we go, number four. And five. Let me know if you make it through this whole workout. Six. And seven. Eight. Last two. Nine and 10, great job. Now you're gonna move away from the pillows, and this time you're just gonna be doing a balancing act. No wall, nothing. So just stand, and now you're gonna let your knees go over your toes just enough so that your heels can stay on the ground. Flex your shins a little bit so that your toes come even closer, just like this. And now lean forward so that you're balancing right here. Just hold this balancing position. Let wobbles happen, hold. There we go. And five, four, three, two, one, and straighten the legs all the way out. Great job. Now let's move on to the reverse Nordic curl. Now go ahead, get onto your knees if you need to. Go ahead and put your knees on top of a pillow, just like this whatever feels best for you. I'm gonna do it on the ground, just like this. So, now that your knees are on the ground and so are your feet, go ahead and lean forward just to start. And now you're gonna squeeze yourself up and press. Make sure your back isn't sticking out like this. You wanna pull your pelvis under you so that you're in line and really, really tall. Make sure those hip flexors are stretching at the top. And bend down and lift. Lower and lift, great job. Just keep that air flowing as you low down and lift. Pause right here. Now just lean back a little bit, only to where you can control it, just a little distance, holding for 10, nine, ease up if you have to, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and lower yourself all the way down. Great job. We have just one more left. You ready? Make sure your back isn't arched. Stay like this. And if you're crunching like this, you want to pull yourself out of your low back so that you're nice and tall. Here we go. 
This time, instead of leaning forward or staying neutral, try and lean back just a little bit. Here we go. Lifting up, one, we're only doing five, and lower, and two, and three, and number four, last one, and five, and lower down. Great job. Now, you're gonna need a wall, and I'm gonna stretch you out real quick, so let's do that. All right, great job. So now that we've done the workout, you're just gonna, gonna wanna stretch everything out. Now remember, stretching is most effective after you do a workout, because your muscles are warm. So go ahead and stand up, just lean against the wall with one hand, and everybody knows this stretch. We all learned it in middle school or even kindergarten, I don't know when. But make sure you're as tall as you possibly can. Make sure your foot's not forward like this, that you're actually pulling it back behind you. But you also don't want your back arching. You want to keep it in that neutral position so that you're all the way in alignment, just like that. And switch sides. Bring the other one up. Again, all the same cues apply right here. Make sure your foot's not forward. And also make sure your back is not arching behind you. Keep it in control, just pulling that heel towards your glute. And make sure you maintain your posture. And foot down. Great job. Now we're going to do these hip flexors real quick. So what you're going to do is bring a foot forward and stretch your other foot all the way behind you, almost like you're going to run the 100 meter dash or something like that. This is called a runner's lunge. That's why I said that. Basically, keep your knee off the ground. Keep your foot right here. Your knee is right over your ankle and your other foot in the back is staying with your toes on the ground and your knee is lifted up, holding this. And now lower the knee down to the ground and your toe, you're pointing it out behind you and it's down on the floor and you're holding this position. You should feel this in your hip flexor now right here. Just breathe deeply. Let the oxygen flow in through the nose and then you breathe out through the mouth. The more oxygen, the better. And switching sides. Go ahead and straighten the other leg all the way out, but keep the knee off of the ground to start. Make sure your knee is right over your ankle. Your toes are on the floor. Your knee is lifted up. We're in our runner's lunge position. Make sure you're actively straightening that leg out behind you. And it's also pretty common to have one side tighter than the other. That's okay, don't worry about it. Don't focus on it harder. It'll catch up with the other side. Just give it time and consistency. Now drop the knee down and point out the toes behind you and hold right here. You should feel this in your hip flexor. If you didn't feel it on the other side, you're gonna to wanna to do it again, but press your pelvis a little lower into it. But just hold where you feel comfortable, where you feel that stretch. You don't wanna go into any pain, just go where you feel that slight bit of tension. Great job, lift up. And now, this is the very important part, you're gonna to wanna to stretch back behind your legs, just like this, behind your knees. So how you can do that, instead of trying to touch your toes or even touching your toes, what you're gonna do is stand all the way tall. Let's see if I can be in frame. You can also lean up against the wall, make sure your toes are away from the wall. Get good posture in the upper body and then lean forward to wherever you can so you can feel that hamstring stretching, but keep your back flat, don't let it round forward. So you might be right here, you might be a little further forward, or you might be somewhere where I can go right here. Just hold and breathe. Keep the back flat, don't round it, just keep it flat. You should feel it right behind your knees. Your calves should be slightly stretching but mostly your hamstrings, breathing deeply. And now lift yourself up all the way tall and jiggle those legs out. Even though that was a short little simple workout, you should feel kind of like a little bit like jelly, which is a good thing. Great job, everybody. Next video, I'll probably teach you a little bit more about how to get into the splits and how to safely train for it. Well, if you're looking forward to that, go ahead and like and subscribe. Leave a comment, let me know how this whole YouTube thing is going. This is my first video. Welcome to the channel if you're from TikTok, Instagram. Uh, but if this is just the algorithm sending you, welcome as well. 
All right, you guys have a good one. See ya.